A model was just released that is as good as DeepSeek R1, but much smaller to the point where you can actually run it on your computer. It has comparable results. It is a thinking model and runs insanely fast. And the best part, it is completely open source. This is QWQ32B by Alibaba. This is part of the Quen series of models and it just dropped. Look at these benchmarks. It is comparable to DeepSeek R1, the full version, 671 billion parameters but it's only 32 billion parameters, which means you can easily run this on your computer. With Amy 2024, 79.5 versus 79.8, Live Code Bench, definitely a few points lower, but very comparable. Live Bench, better than DeepSeek, IF Eval, better than DeepSeek, and BFCL, six points ahead of DeepSeek. So they start the blog post by talking about, of course, reinforcement learning. That's the same technique that OpenAI used for the 01 and 03 series of models, and also what DeepSeek R1 independently verified works really well to elicit that thinking behavior from these foundation models. So you take a small or medium-sized good foundation model, you apply reinforcement learning to it, and then all of a sudden it becomes a phenomenal thinking model. And they specifically trained agent-related capabilities into this model, so it works really well to think critically and use tools as well. And Grok, G-R-O-Q, is hosting it and getting 450 tokens per second with it. It is insane to watch. I will show you that in a minute. All right, so how did they do it? They started with a cold start checkpoint and implemented reinforcement learning with a scaling approach driven by outcome-based rewards. All right, so let's break that down. So they're using reinforcement learning with verifiable rewards, and the reward is based on the outcome versus the process. And remember, there's a difference between outcome-based reward models and process-based reward models. I tend to think that the process-based reward models are better because you can actually reward the model for getting multiple steps right, even if it doesn't get the final answer right, because then it learns that the first few steps were right, and it can iterate on those final steps and getting the answer right later. Now, with the outcome-based reward model, you are only rewarding the model for the total output, the total solution. Is it right or is it wrong? So if it got nine out of 10 steps right and then got the final one wrong, it's still gonna get that negative reward signal. And so the initial stage, they say they scaled RL specifically for math and coding tasks. That is how you start eliciting that thinking behavior because you can give it feedback and it is a verifiable reward. For math and coding, you know whether you're right or wrong and thus you have a very strong reward signal. But rather than relying on traditional reward models, they utilize an accuracy verifier for math problems to ensure the correctness of final solutions and a code execution server to assess whether the generated code successfully passed predefined test cases. So. Kind of an interesting approach. They're using a separate model for the math, basically a verifier. Is it how accurate is the answer compared to the ground truth? And then for the code, they used a server. So they wrote tests to test if the code is right or not, and then use that as the reward signal. And so they used reinforcement learning with math and coding, and it continuously got better. But they didn't stop there. After the first stage, they add another stage of reinforcement learning for general capabilities. So you're gonna see this is kind of a hybrid approach. Reinforcement learning with verifiable rewards, math and coding, but now they also used a general reward model for more generalized capabilities. We find that this stage of RL training with a small amount of steps can increase the performance of other general capabilities, such as instruction following, alignment with human preference, and agent performance performance without significant performance drops in math encoding. So they use the math encoding to get it started, they get it to a really good place, and then they generalize after that using these other techniques. So kind of a cool recipe to come up with a more general model. You know who else is cooking up some new recipes? The sponsor of today's video, Stagehand by Browserbase. As a developer, you know people are spending way too much time doing the same tasks every single week. Checking email, finding things on Amazon, getting your grocery list set up. And of course, you know there's an easier way. Agents are now starting to use the web just like humans. And that's where Stagehand comes in. Stagehand is an open source framework that sits on top of Playwright and uses AI to make your automations actually 
actually resilient. Enable your agents to browse the web. And here's the cool part. You can describe what you want in natural language, but still have full control over how your automations operate. And with this, the browser-based team created Open Operator, which is an open source version of OpenAI's operator. So I'll link the open source repo down below, check it out, star it, and you could connect your agents to start browsing the web immediately. Huge thanks to BrowserBase for sponsoring this video and contributing such an awesome tool to the open source community. Let me know what you think in the comments about this and now, Back to the video. Now, listen to this. We are confident that combining stronger foundation models with RL powered by scaled computational resources will propel us closer to achieving artificial general intelligence. Now, the reason why I wanna stop and emphasize this point is because a lot of people had a lot of negative things to say about GPT 4.5. It wasn't this huge improvement. It was very expensive, but you know what? They got it out, and now recently, over the last couple of days, we're seeing it's actually really, really good. But the thing is, it is a new foundational model. It is a much improved foundational model over GPT-4.0. So you take that foundation model, and then you add reinforcement learning on top of it. And that's what they're describing here, combining a stronger foundation model with RL. So if you start with a much better model, that seed of a model, you apply RL to it, then the outcome is going to be much, much better. And so that is why I'm really excited about GPT 4.5 and what the potential of adding reinforcement learning on top of that will be. That might already be what O3 Pro is, but we don't know. So here they end with something really exciting. Additionally, we are actively exploring the integration of agents with reinforcement learning to enable long horizon reasoning, aiming to unlock greater intelligence with inference time scaling. So even more test time compute than what it's already capable of. And it's clear that they were really thinking about agents here. You know I'm bullish on agents, and especially as I've been doing a lot more vibe coding lately, which is essentially agentic coding, these models that do function calling, function writing, tool calling really, really well, those are the ones that tend to do vibe coding best. In fact, when you choose a model that isn't especially good at agentic tasks, Cursor tells you that. Look at this. So when I select Gemini 2.0 Flash Thinking Experimental, it says that this model doesn't have good agent support yet. So the model really has to be fine-tuned with agents in mind and tool calling and function calling in mind. And that's why I'm especially excited to try out this model, which is a reasoning model very, very fast, very efficient, but also good at agentic tasks. All right, so I gave it write a Python program that shows a ball bouncing inside a spinning hexagon. The ball should be affected by gravity and friction, and it must bounce off the rotating walls realistically. You've probably seen this test on Twitter. So I'm using a hugging face space, and it's free, so you could try this out, and you can see it's outputting all of this thinking first. And it's decently fast, but I'm gonna show you something insane in a moment. All right, so after a long time of thinking, and it really was long, we have a solution. Let's try it out. Okay, there you go. So we have it working. Obviously, it's not that good, but still, this is the point. We can iterate on it quickly. And how quickly is the question? Now let me show you something absolutely insane. So Grok, G-R-O-Q, you know, the company with absolutely insane inference speeds, has loaded up QWQ32B. Now, let me show you how fast this is. So I'm actually going to take that previous code. I'm going to paste it in here. So I'm going to say the ball doesn't bounce correctly in the simulation. It doesn't touch the walls at all. Please fix it. Watch this. Look how incredibly fast this thinking is. We're getting 450 tokens per second at this point, and now we can do so much more thinking in such a shorter period of time. There is so much potential for this type of speed. But to be a bit critical, artificial analysis has run their own benchmarks and it's not performing as well as the Quen team's own benchmarks. So let me show you that. We have two scores, GPT-QA Diamond and Amy 2024. So GPT-QA Diamond places it at 59.5%, materially behind DeepSeek R1 score of 71% and just behind Gemini 2.0 Flash's score of 62%. And for the Amy 2024, it's 78%, matching their claims, placing it ahead of DeepSeek R1 score, besting all other models we have tested except for O3 Mini High. So its own benchmarks, it didn't perform as well on GPTQA Diamond, but it did perform as well on the Math Amy 2024 benchmark. So here is GPTQA Diamond Scientific Reasoning. 
This is all of the different models. We have O3 Mini High at the very top, Cloud 3.7, Sonnet Thinking at the very top, both at 77%, and Quen QWQ32B right here towards the middle at 60%. Behind, 2.0 Flash, 3.7 Sonnet, Deep Sea Gar 1, 4.5 Preview. By the way, yeah, look at 4.5 Preview. It's really good, even though everybody wasn't impressed by the launch. And here's Amy 2024. Again, O3 Mini at the very top. And there it is, QWQ32B at 78%. So at the score that Quen claimed. Now, a few facts from artificial analysis. QWQ32B has 20 times fewer parameters than Deep Sea Gar 1's 671B total parameter count, and even fewer than Deep Seek's 37B active parameter count. Remember, Deep Sea Gar 1 is a mixture of experts. So when you prompt it, it will only use a fraction of those parameters to actually run the inference. But even the active parameters, Quen is still less than. And QWQ32B was trained and released in BF16, whereas Deep Sea Gar 1 was trained and released natively in floating point 8, which means the native versions of QWQ32B and R1 take up 65 gigabytes, so QWQ32B 65 gigabytes and 671 gigabytes for R1. But here's the interesting part. On hardware with native FP8 support like NVIDIA's H100, DeepSeekR1 may actually use less effective compute per forward pass. So overall, this is still a very impressive model. All right, so you can see what's really possible with a model of this size and this efficiency. Now, couple criticisms. One, 132K context window is not huge. It's kind of on the smaller end of what's standard nowadays. I've also noticed that it thinks a lot, a lot more than Deep Sea Gar 1 does, a lot more than O1 and Cloud 3.7 thinking do. And so all that thinking takes a lot of tokens. And maybe what we need to do is apply chain of draft. If you remember a couple videos ago, I made a video about chain of draft, which essentially is a new prompting technique that gets the model to think, but only output the most critical parts not the entire chain of thought thinking. And so there's a lot we can do with this. It's open source, open weights. It's already being hosted on a bunch of different places. I encourage you to check it out, play around with it. Let me know what you think. I've plugged it into Cursor. They should be getting tool support for it, hopefully soon. And with this speed, there's just so much we can do. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.